Hello everyone. So, I'm walking around my garage, which has been converted into a storage room, and as I pass by the shelf where I have all sorts of soldering irons lying around, the idea came to me to make a big video about soldering irons. Today, we will look at almost all types of soldering irons, their advantages and disadvantages. We will study both classic soldering irons and exotic ones. I'm sure many of you didn't even know they existed. As we know, the most popular way to connect electrical components is soldering with solder. A soldering iron is a device that heats the solder to its melting temperature. It's a versatile device, used for both mounting and dismounting components. The first soldering irons were handled with a copper block at the end. The block is usually heated over an open flame and, due to its high heat capacity, retains the temperature for a long time. Such simple soldering irons could be considered autonomous, but they were inconvenient due to the massive tip. If you reduce its size, the heat will quickly transfer to the surrounding environment, and the soldering time on one, so to speak, charge will be reduced. With the introduction of electricity into all industries, soldering irons became electric. Although such primitive soldering irons are rarely used, they are sometimes employed if nothing else is available. I will start my story, perhaps, with classic soldering irons, the ones that plug into the power outlet and heat up. As a rule, such soldering irons do not contain any electronics and have a simple design. A regular nichrome heater wound around a sleeve, and a tip that fits into this sleeve and, as a result, heats up. The tip is usually made of copper, or iron. A copper tip has high thermal conductivity and, naturally, it is better than an iron one, but unfortunately, copper wears out quickly. Such soldering irons can be either mains powered or low voltage. Typically, this is 12, 24, 36, or 40 volts. They can be powered by either alternating or direct current. They come in various power ratings, from a few watts to hundreds of watts. They have different form factors. Here, for example, is a dual-mode soldering gun. There's nothing special about it, except for the form factor and the fact that if the soldering iron is plugged in and the button is not pressed, the power is lower, because at that moment the power to the heater is supplied through a diode. When the button is pressed, the full mains voltage is supplied to the heater, bypassing the diode. And this is the so-called hatchet, a powerful soldering iron, consisting of a handle and a massive copper block wrapped with a nichrome element. Such soldering irons are used for soldering large parts, for example, for soldering radiators. They are rarely used in amateur radio work. Due to the massive tip with enormous heat capacity, these soldering irons retain heat for a very long time, and you can continue soldering with them for quite a while after being unplugged. And this is its modern counterpart, only the form factor is slightly different and the tip is smaller. These soldering irons can have a power range from 150 to 500 watts. USB soldering irons. This soldering iron works on the same principle as a regular one, a nichrome heater and a working tip. Such soldering irons often have a power range from 4 to 12 watts, powered by a 5 volt source or a regular USB. The tip of these soldering irons is usually non-burnable and, together with the heating element, forms a single unit. Since the soldering iron is low power and the tiny tip does not have high heat capacity, such soldering irons can only be used for small tasks. Often, these soldering irons are equipped with a touch activation timer. You pick up the soldering iron and it starts. After a certain period, it turns off if you don't touch the sensor. There are, of course, more advanced USB soldering irons with electronic controls, displays, and so on. The tip of regular USB soldering irons is not very durable, but modified, more expensive models may have a tip with a non-burnable coating, and even a thermal stabilization system, to maintain a stable temperature at the tip. Battery-powered soldering irons Often, they are no different from classic soldering irons, except that they are powered by regular batteries or a rechargeable battery. These soldering irons belong to the class of autonomous soldering irons, as they are not tethered to a power outlet. Cheap battery-powered soldering irons like this one are powered by three AA batteries at one and a half volts each, but they can also operate on nickel batteries at one and two volts. 
they have the same tip as regular USB soldering irons. Accordingly, the power is also not much different. More expensive models operate on lithium batteries and have a built-in charging and battery protection system. These can have a power of 30 and even 50 watts and come with a tip with a non-stick coating. The downside of powerful battery-operated soldering irons is the short battery life, but in return, you get a fairly serious and powerful soldering iron that can handle most hobbyist tasks. Like USB soldering irons, these can also have some electronics inside, responsible for the timer, heater control, charging, and battery protection. Instant heat soldering irons, or so-called moment soldering irons, are usually designed in the form of a soldering gun. Their heating principle is fundamentally different from the classic one. If in the first case a nichrome heater heats the tip, in this case, inside the soldering iron, we find a transformer. This transformer has two windings, a primary network, winding and a secondary power winding. The secondary winding is designed for low voltage and a very high current over 100 amperes. This winding is closed by the tip and essentially we get a short circuit, which leads to the heating of the tip. The winding itself also heats up, but this is mostly heat transferred from the tip. Such soldering irons are known to heat up to working temperature in a few seconds. The tip can be made from either copper wire or steel. The disadvantages of such soldering irons include their heavy weight due to the presence of a heavy iron transformer. But nothing prevents replacing it with a compact and lightweight pulse power supply. The power of such soldering irons ranges from 60 to 100, 50 watts. They are inconvenient for everyday tasks. Soldering small components with them is quite difficult, and your hand gets tired. Gas soldering irons also belong to the class of autonomous soldering irons. In fact, it's an ordinary, lighter, boost tank has a valve for refilling and is filled with regular butane. And, of course, a burner on which you can attach a special soldering tip. The secret of these soldering irons lies in this tip. Inside them, there is a mesh or catalyst that initially heats up with the burner's flame. And then, once the mesh is red hot, the flame can be extinguished. The gas string will still be directed at the mesh, and it will remain in a red hot state, but there will no longer be a flame. This principle is called catalytic, or flameless combustion. Tourist heaters, some camping stoves, and many other devices operate on the same principle. The temperature of the tip is adjusted with a gas flow regulator. Such soldering irons can come with or without piezo ignition and have various attachments for soldering, cutting plastic, and so on. Honestly, I haven't grown fond of gas soldering irons for several reasons. Firstly, the cheaper options are very durable. They always seem to have leaks somewhere. And they tend to get clogged quite often. You'd think they'd be great as a portable soldering iron since the gas supply lasts a long time, but that's not the case. A 10 milliliter tank will last about 15 to 20 minutes of continuous work, and from an economic standpoint, it's expensive if you use such a soldering iron actively. There are gas soldering irons with larger tanks, but they are bulky. Another drawback is the exposed hot catalyst making it extremely dangerous to use such a soldering iron in areas where there might be flammable vapors or substances. Soldering iron with a desoldering pump. A desoldering pump is a useful tool, sometimes, helping out when dismantling multi-lead components by sucking up the solder at the soldering point. To use a desoldering pump, the solder naturally needs to be melted with a soldering iron. This is not always convenient, as both hands are occupied, and so, at some point, someone decided to combine these two tools, and as a result, the soldering-desoldering pump was created. It's a regular soldering iron with a classic design, except that there is a through hole in the center of the tip, which is connected to the desoldering pump. This way, you can quickly melt and remove excess solder. 
I'll be honest with you, the device doesn't shine with mega convenience, as it is mechanical. And each time, this mechanism needs to be charged, just like a regular desoldering pump. But there are also desoldering vacuum guns that have a vacuum pump built in. Press a button, and the solder starts being sucked in. In my opinion, it's very convenient. Such guns can be standalone and powered from the mains, or be part of professional soldering stations. Soldering stations are the most popular among radio enthusiasts, engineers, and they are indispensable wherever there is a need for soldering. The term station often refers to a soldering complex consisting of at least a hot air gun and a soldering iron. But we will just look at the soldering iron. Again, this is a classic soldering iron, and the heating principle is the same as that of a regular soldering iron. Only with a station, the tip is usually placed directly onto the heater. But this is not always the case. The heating element can be either nichrome or ceramic. The station allows for temperature adjustment of the tip and something more, namely, thermal stabilization and advanced control. That is, let's say you are soldering something massive, and the tip quickly loses temperature, causing the solder to start cooling down. In such soldering irons, there is a temperature sensor that detects when the temperature has dropped. Then the station's electronic components monitor the data from the thermocouple and automatically increase the heater's power, so that you can continue soldering comfortably. On average, the power of soldering irons from classic stations ranges from 35 to 120 watts, and more precisely, from 40 to 65. More advanced stations have microprocessor control and a very extensive menu, which allows you to set the time for the soldering iron to enter sleep mode, the tip heating temperature immediately after turning on, the temperature adjustment step, and much, much more. Stations can have an informative display that shows the main parameters in real time. It must be mentioned that in soldering irons, a lot depends on the tip itself. Yes, I'm talking about the ultra-popular Hakko T12 tips, their clones, and modifications. Such a tip is monolithic, with a heater and thermocouple inside. They have a non-burnable coating that does not wear out for years, even with active soldering. The thermocouple in such tips is located very close to the tip, which allows the station to instantly respond to the slightest temperature fluctuations. Thanks to this, these tips are versatile and can handle soldering very large pads. With a power of 60 to 65 watts, they can compete with 100 to 120 watt soldering irons. Also, T12 tips heat up to working temperature in about 5 seconds. And yes, I know you've upgraded your soldering iron, and with increased power supply, it heats up in 3 seconds and has a power of 90 to 100 watts. Stations, of course, are good, but they do take up a certain amount of space on the workbench. And for people like me, it's a hassle to reach for the temperature adjustment knob every time. Smart Chinese manufacturers know their stuff, and that's why soldering stations were invented in the handle of a compact soldering iron. Yes, it's a full-fledged soldering station, just without the large control unit. All the electronics are hidden in the handle. We have a display, a couple of control buttons, an accelerometer, and almost all the settings you would find in any station. The same T12 tip, just in a different form factor. In short, supply the soldering iron with 24 volts DC, and that's it. We have convenient controls right under the thumb. You set the soldering iron down, and after a while, it lowers the temperature. Pick it up, and it automatically heats up. If you don't use it for a long time, it goes into sleep mode. Quick thermal stabilization, durable non-burning tip. Heats up to 300 degrees in just 5 to 6 seconds. What else do you need for complete happiness? For complete happiness, you need a smart induction soldering station or at least a regular one. Induction soldering stations are fundamentally different in their heating principle from classic soldering irons and stations. In such soldering irons, there is no heating element, only an inductor and a tip. An alternating high-frequency magnetic field is generated in the inductor, inducing eddy currents, or Foucault currents. 
These are what heat the core of the tip, which is a ferromagnet or has a ferromagnetic coating. At the same time, the working part, or the tip of the soldering iron, is usually made of copper, for optimal heat transfer and has a non-oxidizing coating. In such soldering irons, the temperature of the tip is regulated in several ways. The main method is heating the ferromagnetic material to the Curie temperature, after which the material loses its magnetic properties and the heating stops. When it cools below the Curie point, the heating resumes. Such soldering irons are more durable, have a lightning fast response to temperature fluctuations at the tip, and can be made with higher power while maintaining relatively small inductor sizes. The biggest advantage, perhaps, is that unlike conventional soldering irons, where heat is transferred from the heater to the tip, in induction models, the tip itself is heated directly, without additional losses. And naturally, the efficiency and heating time of good induction stations are at a very high level. The downside, perhaps, is the price. Induction stations from leading manufacturers can cost several thousand dollars. The next type of soldering iron is possibly one of a kind and hasn't found widespread use due to its absurd working principle. A widely advertised soldering iron in telemarkets that solders, but doesn't heat up. You solder something and you can immediately touch the tip without getting burned. How is that possible, you might ask? Yes, it's very simple. Power from batteries, typically 4 AA cells at 1.5 volts each, goes to the tip, which consists of two non-contacting graphite beveled half sleeves. When you solder, the solder is placed between these hoof-like things. And, as expected, it heats up in a careful manner, as all the current from the batteries is applied to it. Which leads to the melting of the solder. Drawbacks. Firstly, for such soldering to be possible, the batteries must deliver very high currents. This thing doesn't work at all with regular batteries. It doesn't work properly even with good alkaline batteries. I was only able to get it to work with nickel metal hydride batteries of 1 and 2 volts. They have a high discharge current, but in this case, the wiring, the soldering iron, and the batteries themselves start to heat up. The second point, at the tips of the tip, on those graphite things, we have the full voltage from the battery. If during assembly or disassembly you touch the wrong component, it's quite possible to short something out and burn it. In general, it's nonsense invented by marketers, but otherwise, stylish design and autonomy. But, the idea is unsuccessful. The idea is about cold soldering, but the drawbacks overshadow this, so-called advantage. Soldering tweezers. Convenient for assembly and disassembly, particularly of SMD components, but it's not to say they are in high demand. Because almost everything they can do can also be done by a regular soldering heat gun. The heat gun even does the same job faster. This is a regular classic soldering iron, it just has two heaters and two tips. The design allows the device to be used as a regular tweezer. Other than that, nothing special. I don't think I missed anything. Of course, there are all sorts of hybrid soldering irons created for marketing purposes. In reality, they don't make a solderer's life any easier. In this video, I did not cover hot air and infrared soldering stations, as the goal was to show the types of soldering irons, not the methods of heating solder. If you're interested in a video about stations, leave a comment about it. That's all from me for today. If you liked the video, you can share it with your friends. And subscribe to my Instagram, where I upload photos of new projects and various curiosities. As always, this was Kazyanov K. With you, until next time, goodbye.